Hi guys, this is Randy, your Rare Metals Guy here. Today we're going to talk about rare earth elements versus rare industrial metals. I read articles from other writers who often refer to rare industrial or technical metals as rare earth elements. I'd like to take some time and clear up the issue. I deal with RIMs and REEs on a daily basis. The two might both be considered metals, but that is where the similarities end. First we have REEs or rare earth elements. These metals consist of 17 metals, the lanthanides plus scandium and yttrium on the periodic table of the elements. These metals are in powder form, making them difficult to assay and store. One important factor that is often mentioned is that they are not rare. This is very true, but finding REEs in large enough deposits to mine is difficult. Here I have a few examples. First we have neodymium. It's light blue in color, and it's a powder like I was saying used in magnets. Here's lanthanum, lanthanum oxide, also used in magnets. And cerium, tan in color, also used in magnets. In the mining sector, REE mines are standalone mines who focus on the mining and refining of REEs exclusively. Currently, around 90% of all rare earth elements are mined and refined in China. Historically, REE mining and refining has been a dirty business, which has affected the environment around the mines. The elements thorium and uranium are often found along with the REEs in the deposits, causing the slurry to be slightly radioactive when processed. The use of highly toxic acids during the processing can also have serious environmental impacts. Many companies are trying to open REE mines, but they are meeting headwinds. Nations and the people do not want these mines in their backyards. Just go look at Malaysia and Australia and what they're trying to do with their rare earth element mines. Over the last few years, China has dramatically cut its export of REEs. This and the increased need for REEs have caused a meteoric rise in the value of these metals. The one area that very few people talk about is the role of the media combined with speculators. For a while, REEs were the rock stars of the metals. The news has calmed as of late, but the factors that cause the metals to soar are still in place. Recently, China closes Baotao Mine until the rare earth element prices stabilize. They don't like it when the prices go down too low. Rare industrial metals, rims, or technical metals are another topic entirely. The rims are made up of metals used in over 80% of all products used on a daily basis. Without these metals, you would not have the world of the 21st century with its mobile phones, its hybrid cars, flat screen TVs, highly efficient solar cells, and computers. Some of these metals include indium, tellurium, gallium, tantalum, and hafnium. These metals are rare compared to the rare earth elements, which causes a great deal of confusion. These metals are in a metallic form, stable, and easy to store and ship. Here are some examples. This is gallium, and when it's at room temperature, it's solid, but if it's body temperature, it actually turns to a liquid. Pretty cool stuff. Here is wolfram, or tungsten in English. This is the metal that is a lot of used in the weapons industry. Bullets, uh, tank armor, all kinds of stuff for the, for, uh, the military industrial complex, wolfram or tungsten. And here is tantalum. Tantalum is used to make your cell phone small, all those capacitors and circuits in your phones. This is what made it possible in your computers and a lot of other places also. And this is the, the form used in industry in these little, little pieces. It doesn't come out naturally like this, but it's pressed to make these sizes. Rims are mined as a byproduct of base or common metal mining. For example, tellurium is a byproduct of copper mining, and gallium is a byproduct of aluminum and zinc mining. The mining of rims are mostly at the mercy of the markets for the base or common metal mining. If the copper mines of the world decide to cut production due to copper losing value, this will have a huge impact on the amount of tellurium being mined. Also because of the small size of the rim market, many mining companies do not feel the need to invest money into better technology to mine and refine these metals. The rims would have to be valued much higher to gain the attention of the mining industry. When China exports of rare earth elements, 
They also cut exports of rims. This put pressure on the value of these metals. Rare industrial metals have increased in value, but nowhere near the meteoric rise you saw in the rare earth elements. Most of the metals increased in value around 47% in 2010 and about 25% so far in 2011. When REEs in the stock market recently fell sharply, the rims came down slightly but have held their own. According to Knut Anderson of Swiss Metal Assets, if the prices of the rare industrial metals continue to rise, you only see a very small increase in the price of the end products because there is so little of each metal used to produce these products. Also, if the people can't afford a smartphone, they will still buy a phone, just a cheaper model. The need for rims has risen sharply over the years and does not seem to be slowing. China, India, and the whole of Africa are now buying and using computers and mobile phones. The future is bright for the technologies and the rare industrial metals that make them work. So if you'd like some more information, you can contact me here on YouTube or on Google Plus or on Facebook, wherever else you'd like to contact me. I thank you for being a fan. I thank you for following me. Have a great day. This is your Rare Metals Guy.